Hey guys, Dr. Cole here, and in today's video, we're gonna be discussing a topic that YouTube and Facebook and Google uh, do not like us to talk about very much. So I'm gonna post it on these platforms. We'll see how long it stays up here. If not, we'll put it on a different platform. But I'm doing this video because of a, an event that I went through recently, and I'm doing this to help anybody else who may be going through the same thing, and just to share a lot of research that I've that I've you know just discovered in the previous few weeks of studying. So um, another thing in this video, so we're gonna be talking about a medication. And I am a chiropractor, I practice functional medicine. I believe in taking a holistic root cause approach to health. Uh, I'm very, I don't wanna say anti-medication, but I believe that they are over-prescribed and that our, our current healthcare system is based upon a failing model that they just give too many drugs to cover symptoms instead of investigating root cause approaches. So. Understand, although my typical approach is to not go medicine if, if not needed, um, what we're going to be talking about today might surprise you. We're talking about a medication that I found very beneficial, uh, very safe, and a lot of different applications that can be used to help a lot of people. So what are we talking about here today? Uh, a few weeks ago, I was bitten by a tick. Now, I've been bit by ticks before. We live in western Pennsylvania. They're unfortunately all over the place today. Growing up, we never had them at all. But now, nowadays, it's just if you're if you're in any like green grassy area, you know you have to check yourself for ticks. Our dogs get them often. <coughs> Excuse me. My wife and I have been bit before, and you know we always just pull them off. Hopefully, if they're on for 24 hours or less, that's not enough of a time for the tick to transmit Lyme or any other illness. So you know if you get one, you pull it off, you pray to God nothing happens, and you know we haven't had any issues so far. But. A few weeks ago, I was checking myself in the mirror at night and I saw a tick on my back in between my shoulder blades, a place I couldn't reach. And so I had my wife come here and uh, you know take it off me. And unfortunately, it looked like it had been uh, engorged for a little while. It looked like it had been there on there longer than I wanted it to. So I did my due diligence. I took that tick, we put it into a plastic bag and we sent it off to a lab in Pennsylvania. I will list the lab beneath here. The, the name escapes me right now. but. If you send your tick there, they will test it for a bunch of various different types of pathogens. They'll test it for Lyme minimally, but if you want to pay for an expanded panel, which is what I did, they'll test for any possible pathogen that that tick uh, may be carrying. So, you know, what do you know? A couple of days later, I started feeling sick, and this was unlike a regular sickness. I began feeling like what I had always imagined a tick-borne illness would feel like. I had the worst headache of my life, my whole neck. My head was pounding, my, my neck, my entire spine was so stiff I could barely turn my head. It felt like I had a back injury. My low back was so stiff, it felt like a disc injury. And uh, just all my skin was sensitive. I had a fever, I had chills, I had just tenderness all over. It was to the point where even my, my scalp, like if you would run your hair, oh, I should've put my, my phone on silent here. We're gonna keep pressing on anyway. It was to the point where if I would run my fingers through my hair, uh, even just my scalp was so sensitive. So, you know, I knew this was not a regular flu. This was a, a tick-borne illness from that tick that had gotten me. So uh, I went in and got tested, but the protocols for tick-borne illness is that if you, if you get bit by a tick, you don't wait for the testing to come back because it's, it's generally three weeks or longer. And if you know anything about ticks, time is of the essence. You have to get it right away or else you can risk long-term chronic illnesses, which is why I'm doing this video for a lot of people that may uh, find themselves in that situation. So um, I was feeling really sick. I have a, a real aversion to taking antibiotics. You know, I've never taken any medications in my adult life. Maybe a few rounds of antibiotics when I was younger. But um, even though I knew it was most likely a tick, I held off a few days uh, just to see if I, on my own, might start feeling better. Well, you've heard me probably in other videos say that antibiotics can save your life if you have Lyme or if you have uh, like pneumonia or some type of a serious infection, that's when you should take antibiotics. But despite that, I still kept holding off and I, I reached out to a, to a doctor friend of mine who's also a chiropractor um, who's had Lyme before. And I said, you know, I, think I got bit by a tick. I feel like this could be Lyme or some type of a tick-borne illness. And he said, Zach, you got to take ivermectin. And that's what this video is about, you guys, because uh, and that's, uh, that's the word, by the way, that, that mainstream media hates because if you've never heard of ivermectin, <laughs> ivermectin was a drug that was very successfully used during, uh, we'll just call it, I can't use the C word here, during the pandemic. Ivermectin was a drug that a lot of doctors um, who were very good medical doctors would use to help their patients. Now, mainstream healthcare 
modern healthcare and mainstream media, Dr. Fauci, you know, they all vilify the use of ivermectin. Even though there were many medical doctors saying that they were saving patients' lives and clinics that didn't lose a patient, and you would have people like Joe Rogan uh, giving his account of using ivermectin, uh, it helped a lot of people get better very quickly from the pandemic, but it didn't fit the narrative. It didn't fit the, the need for a jab type narrative. So it was vilified. Now, me and, and just my belief about everything, I went and got ivermectin because you know, if I would come down with something or a family member would come down with the, with the pandemic, you know, I, I believe enough in that medication and I've talked to enough medical doctors and did enough research that I thought that is the best way to go. Now, that was my limited knowledge of it. I didn't research ivermectin any further. I knew it was safer than what I believe taking the jab. And, uh, and I, I saw the, the firsthand accounts of other doctors who were being silenced that ivermectin was helping them quite a bit. Now, when my friend told me to have ivermectin, to take ivermectin for my tick-borne illness, that was new to me. But I was desperate. It was a Sunday. I couldn't get an antibiotic anyway. And uh, so I had it in my refrigerator. I already had ivermectin from a previous prescription being filled. So I took that that night. It was a Sunday evening. I already had my, my, uh, my schedule canceled for the next day on my patients. I didn't know how long I was going to have to cancel days for. I was worried about the long-term repercussions of this. But what do you know, taking ivermectin just that night... I woke up feeling 80 to 90% better the next morning. So I was like, wow, something's really on. I'm, we're really on to something with this here right now. So that set me on to a journey for the rest of that week doing a deep dive into ivermectin. And you won't find a lot of this stuff on Google, but you know, I used, whether you like it or not, I used a Russian search engine called Yandex, Y-A-N-D-E-X. I'm probably using a bunch of words that will get this video deplatformed. But Yandex doesn't silence things like Google does. So searching things like ivermectin and Lyme, ivermectin and tick-borne illnesses, I found that for years, some, sometimes blogs I would read that go back over a decade, you know, people were using ivermectin for tick-borne illnesses very, very successfully. The reason being is that when a tick bites you, of course it spits the bacteria into you, and that's what the antibiotics are good to, that's what the antibiotics are good to help. However, ticks also spit parasites into you whenever they, whenever they bite you. In fact, Dr. Bergdorferi, which was the, the, the man who discovered Lyme disease, was initially studying the parasitic effects of ticks more than the bacterial effects of it. So what is ivermectin? Ivermectin is an anti-parasitic. It, it kills worms, it kills parasites. And I'm not talking about just only big gut-borne parasites that you can physically like see in a toilet. But I'm talking about the microscopic parasites. Like when a tick bites you and transmits those parasites into you, sometimes they're as small as red blood cells. So they're like systemic type parasites. So the thing about the ivermectin and why it helped me so quickly is that the, the parasites are harborers. First of all, they drive, their own, uh, they drive their own diseases in the body. But from my research, they also protect other pathogens in your body. They can harbor themselves viruses, bacteria, uh, <coughs> chemicals and toxins like heavy metals. And so when you go far enough upstream and remove the source of the parasites, that's when your body's own immune system is now, is now able to get a foothold and basically <coughs> begin to do its job properly. Now here's where the story gets very interesting. So first of all, let me go back. My illness was, uh, was not Lyme. I had all the tick-borne symptoms, but I didn't have a rash and I didn't have joint pain. So I was thinking, you know, this fits, excuse me, this fits um, a, a, Lyme a, a tick type illness, but it didn't quite seem like Lyme. So my tick that I sent in for testing, this is why you should always do this with a, with a tick, it came back positive for an even worse condition, unfortunately, called anaplasmosis, human-based anaplasmosis. And this is very serious if left untreated. My tick was carrying four different types of anaplasmosis and Babesia, negative for Lyme disease, but um, anaplasmosis has to get treated immediately or it can become very serious and very chronic. So, you know, my, my experience, and, and again, I'm only using my experience, guys. I should have done a, uh, I'll do the disclaimer at the end, talk to your doctor, but I'm only giving you my experience of, of my use of ivermectin. So, um, you know, talking to my friend who's also a chiropractor, he said, he says, Zach, I'm seeing a lot of people in my clinic that are using high dose ivermectin for things off label. Uh, he sees a lot of neurological cases. So he was seeing neurological cases, uh, infections, things that weren't responding to any other regular treatments and responding very well 
to high dose ivermectin. That's how he knew to tell me about the ivermectin for my tick. He said he's seen so many people who have had chronic Lyme and chronic tick-borne illnesses doing tremendous when they began treating uh, with high dose ivermectin. And I'll get to the doses that I did in a minute here. <laughs> anyway, um, the next day, so we're on Monday now. I'm feeling a lot better just from doing the ivermectin. I go and see my medical doctor who's in my town here and she's actually the only one around that would prescribe ivermectin. She told us crazy stories about going into hospitals, saving people's lives with ivermectin. Uh, the only one around here who, who's doing it. And, there, and so she's kind of like a hero in our area because she's been able to help so many people. Well, um, when I told her about the tick bite, we still decided to, to do doxycycline. Even though we're days later now and I'm doing better only on the ivermectin, ticks are serious enough that we don't want to risk any long-term side effects. So I decided to do doxycycline and the ivermectin. However, interestingly enough, she confirmed what my other uh, doctor friend had told me, that she sees people with neurological issues, infections, tick-borne illnesses that do great on ivermectin, let alone the people that walk in that should be going to a hospital with the pandemic. And uh, they do tremendous in a day or two of taking ivermectin. So you guys, I'm only telling you what I've been through and from what I've talked to other medical doctors, uh, I mean to medical doctors and other physicians about who have seen people in their clinics using this here, guys. If you go on Yandex and you type in ivermectin for tick-borne illnesses, don't take my word for it. You will read accounts of people that have been years on chronic tick-borne illnesses now doing amazing with high-dose ivermectin. So look, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not telling you you should go do this. I can't prescribe this for you. I'm only giving you my firsthand accounts. But I will tell you, it's been very powerful in my own life. I plan on continuing on with it. I'll get into dosing in a minute here. I'll sound like a drug commercial here. Go talk to your doctor to see if ivermectin is right for you. But honestly, that's what you should do. And if you have a doctor that has an ego problem or that will not prescribe this for you, uh, you can go to America's Frontline Doctors. It's a great group of doctors that all during the pandemic were doing telehealth calls with people and it's literally saving lives by, by prescribing ivermectin. So if you have a doctor in your, in your area, great. If not, America's Frontline Doctors. Now, here's the dosing that I did. Uh, if you look online, you'll see that most dosing for ivermectin is 0.2 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. However, on Rumble, Rumble's like the underground, not say underground, but the different, you know, more conservative version of YouTube. Uh, there's a doctor named Peter McCullough. He's a medical doctor. Again, he's, he's a doctor who has, who has a medical degree that's been talking about ivermectin, but because that topic is not permitted by mainstream media, he was totally silenced, except for places like Rumble. On Rumble, you'll, you'll hear videos of Dr. Peter McCullough saying that ivermectin is one of the safest drugs ever created. In fact, his recommended dosage is 0.6 milligrams, triple what the manufacturer's recommendation is, and that's what I took. I personally did 0.6 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. I've done that for about 12 days. I'm probably gonna be done here pretty soon. You know, an antibiotic round was 10 days. I'm taking it a little bit longer than that. But that's what's considered high dose, like a triple dose, 0.6 milligrams uh, per kilogram of body weight. Now, my medical doctor who prescribed that for me says that she'll treat people even higher than that if they're very acute. And that herself, even being a healthy person, <laughs> takes 40 milligrams of ivermectin one day per week, every week prophylactically, just to protect herself from all the people that she sees and encounters in her practice. So, you know, that's probably what I plan on continuing doing just myself, not telling you what to do, but myself, I plan on continuing with 0.4 uh, milligrams. No, 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 40 milligrams uh, one day per week, just you know, indefinitely right now. So here's the final thing about ivermectin. Before the pandemic, doctors loved it. It was voted the uh, it, was, it won the Nobel Prize in 2015. In the 80s and 90s, it was the most used deworming drug for cattle and cats and dogs. But before they came up with a human version of it. So, you know, I'm not taking the cattle version, though you can. I mean, you can, uh, I'm not telling you to, but you know, people take the cattle version of it and are just fine, but they have a human oral-based tablet. That's what I've been taking. And, uh, you know, in 2015, it won the Nobel Prize. The World Health Organization calls it one of the safest and most effective, most beneficial medications ever developed. In fact, Merck and I forget it was Pfizer or GlaxoSmithKline, the biggest drug company manufacturers in the world have donated millions of dollars of ivermectin to third world countries to help with parasite type issues. So they love this drug. They give it away like crazy to other countries, but all of a sudden now because it helps with the pandemic and it doesn't fit the 
you know, the injection type type of uh, narrative now all of a sudden is vilified. It's, it's been considered the most safe drug ever created. It almost interferes with nothing from what I've been reading. Uh, like it, do, it doesn't interact with any of your other medications. So, you know, it's, it's very hard to take too much of this stuff, you guys. So I personally have been taking high dosage. Again, I'm only telling you what I'm doing here. Uh, do your own research, talk to your own doctors, but do a call with a qualified doctor who is going to take a, an objective view on ivermectin. And that will be America's frontline doctor. So uh, hopefully you have a doctor in, in your area that's great as well, but I'm convinced it helped me feel better quickly from a very serious tick bite illness, again, almost overnight. And from the things I've read online and the other doctors I've spoke to who have patients who are using this high dose for other conditions, uh, it's just amazing to see these results. So if you're watching this and you suffer with a tick-borne illness or you have some other type of a you know, crazy condition, again, uh, do your own research. Look into this. It may be something that could, could help you as well. So I, I think that's all the high points I wanted to cover here today. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope this was very helpful. If you have any questions, post them beneath here. Again, I, I have no clue how long this will stay on the internet for, but if it's, uh, if it's off YouTube or other places, we'll put it on Rumble. So thanks a lot for watching, you guys. Have a great day. I'll talk to you soon.